God is good, huh? God is good. He's always blessing us. He's there, boy. I got to tell you, just look if you're missing him because he's not missing us. And uh, that is very thankful. Of course, we need the Lord's presence in our lives continuously because the problems of this world never cease. <laughs> Excuse me. There it is. Okay. Uh, our difficulties and struggles never seem to uh, uh, go away. You know, you know, the Lord's word, what he says is that <clears throat> don't put off to tomorrow what you can do today because tomorrow has its difficulties of its own, those problems of its own. And boy, I live by that. You know, I try to, my wife and she uh, sees me get up in the morning, I'm on the run. I get up out of bed, my feet are going like this. <laughs> because there's so many things that I have to deal with and plans that I got and I'm ready to go. As soon as I walk out the door, God goes, oh, you thought you were going that way, but I got you going this way today. <laughs> so I make plans and God laughs, right, Joe? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, uh, somehow God gives me a little bit of uh, some grace there, and he helps me to get my plans done. Maybe in a different way, like, uh, you know, we all go through that, don't we? And we all struggle through that. I was going past the, uh, the meal at house last night, and we were going to go out to dinner and to a place where they had TV because Ohio State was playing, and they're Ohio State fans. But when I drove past the house and it was raining, they were pouring concrete. Now, they didn't plan for it to rain. <laughs> and um, uh, by the end, the, the good news is that they got through it and they got everything finished correctly. And, and the concrete is, looks like, I went by this morning, looks like it's, uh, it's curing very well. And so it is, you know. God has always pours out his love in our lives. Even when things don't look like they're going to work out, they do. He's a good father. He's a good father. Pleasing God, I was going to talk a little bit about today. And um, <clears throat> one of the reasons why I want to talk about it is because I've been seeking in s to do that uh, recently, especially in different areas of my life, are probably, well, they are not pleasing to God. Some parts of my life are different, but can you believe that? Sure you could, he could. <laughs> you know some of the intimate details of my life is my like stepdad over here, even though he's younger than me. <laughs> he's taught me a lot of different things that I needed to learn. Uh, when I first come to the Lord here, you know, I, I needed a complete work over. You know, I wasn't very, <laughs> I wasn't very organized in my skills of trusting the Lord. So, but, you know, God is a loving, he takes his, you know, he takes his, here, yeah, I wrote something down. He says, you know, pleasing God rather than men. Our children, or orphans, um, I don't have any children, but I have a, a sober living facility, and this is not a commercial or anything, but, or, you know, a lot of times, those guys are like my kids. You know, my kids, a lot of times they might say to me, like, you remind me of my granddad, not even their dad, that's how old I am, you know? <laughs> so, you remind me of my granddad, you know? Like, you were saying some of this, well, I'm probably that age, you know? I mean, we probably learned similar things, but... Our children or orphans, it also, it starts with birth, right? Our children, well, I'm going to talk with parents a little bit because I know a little bit about parenting. <laughs> Some parents as well. Matter of fact, when I started a sober living facility, I went to parents, they asked them, what should I do? And they told me stuff that they have done with their children. And it was very educational because it was in a similar way I was dealing with a lot of people that haven't grown up, and they were like 30-year-old teenagers, you know? <laughs> so it starts with birth. Our children are part of us. They haven't even done anything yet, and we love them. <laughs> they haven't even done anything yet, and you love, right, dad, granddad? You know? We are connected. We're connected. There's a bond there. There is a natural parent-child love bond. Parents derive joy out of the littlest things 
at that age. The joy, like, you would see, oh, look at the smile on his face. Oh, he's so cute. Oh, he's beautiful. And a lot of times I looked at babies and said, I'm trying to find out what they're seeing, you know? But <laughs> I've learned to uh, appreciate that as time went on. Uh, but parents see it instantly. And I, I can just imagine having a child. And that is part of me by blood and flesh. That's something there that, that, has to, that does something to a parent, right, Dad? Yeah. They, they, find the, they find joy in the littlest things at that age, like drooling or eating. Oh, he took a whole spoonful. Oh, get, get it off his chin, you know, put it in his mouth. <laughs> sleeping, look how he's sleeping. Oh. Sucking on their toes, you know. <laughs> Smiling and giggling. <laughs> You know, when a baby smiles, it just makes you smile, doesn't it? Right? Or a child. It just brings joy to your heart. It just lightens you up a little bit. And their eyes sparkle at the same time. They're like, and like, it just does something to you. It does that to anyone. And, uh, and, and it, we take great joy in their first step, right? He took a step today. It's 11 months and two weeks, right? When they, they take a first step about a year, right? Dads, moms. Parents and family find, yeah, they're all different. Yeah, but it's around. I know that age somewhere. Well, what do I know? I don't. I'm not a parent. But parents and family find great pleasure in that. Parents find great pleasure in a child's first words. Right? He said, "Dad, today." <laughs> dad, dad. He said, "Dad." Listen to him. Come on, say it again. He won't say it again, you know. Then the next day he says, Dad! And he smiles because you're smiling. You, get, you laugh and you're like, maybe he said it. I, you know, I, I, I build up on this because it is a, such a joy for a parent to really, and it's a pleasure for them, to see their child growing and also saying a word, you know. The first word, just, just one word. <laughs> First words, in conversations and communication brings pleasure. I start talking to each other. We all start talking to each other. And uh, that's a miracle in itself, you know. And uh, somehow a child understands the language you're speaking and starts mimicking you or doing what you do. If you, whatever language you're speaking. They don't know English or Spanish or Italian or whatever, but they say it, they get, and they correct it and they they modify it and they and they uh, and they uh, correct it and so they, they edify it and and before you know it, they're saying really good words and they start a conversation. Parents get great pleasure of watching their children learn. Parents get pleased when their children obey. <laughs> I know you know where I'm going, right? I know you do. And, but they do. It pleases them, the parents, when our children achieve new tasks and projects. Boy, I got to tell you, I didn't achieve much half of my life, I got to tell you. It was all junk. I thought I was doing stuff, you know. But I, I see what a, a young person today if, if they have really uh, the parents that will teach them, that the, the stuff that they can learn is, uh, is incredible, you know? Um, I started learning when I was about 43. <laughs> okay. What I learned up to that point was just life's skills and what I used to call um, my survival skills. <laughs> uh, they weren't godly skills. You know, they were worldly skills. They were fleshly skills. And, and uh, so when I come to know the Lord at 43 years old, which was, by the way, 30 years ago. And, um, yeah, that's right, I'm 73. And uh, a whole world opened up. I had to learn to talk again. <laughs> I had to learn to say, Dad. You know, call upon my father. I had to learn to trust in my holy father. So 
So we enjoy seeing them effectively relate to others. Parents appreciate gratitude, affection, obedience, respect, and honor. Right? What does it say in God's word? It says, honor your father and mother. You know? God takes great pleasure in us doing that, honoring our fathers and mothers, right? You know, I, I would, I said, well, that's my mom. You know, she knows I like her, you know? <laughs> and it's different than honoring her. How about our Mother's Day? You know, we do that, we, we did that a lot here. And we still do. I mean, we honor our mothers and fathers. I got the opportunity to honor my mother in the last 20, 15 years of her life. I uh, didn't do that much before that, but I was learning a new language. I was learning a new language, I was learning a spiritual language that God was teaching me His ways. And I started changing. You know, parents love that. <laughs> I hadn't been back to New Jersey for 16 years. I didn't see my mom. I didn't know she was dead or alive. And when I finally went back and I got um, um, restored, to a relationship with my family in New Jersey, um, my mom, the first thing she said to me, I prayed for you every day. <laughs> I prayed for you every day. She said it about three times. I think it was important, you know? And, and like, you know, he just went like, whoop, you know? And I said, well, I don't know about my mom's prayers making a difference, but they did. And I got hit right in the tart with that one. And I'm like, thank you, mom, because they worked. <laughs> things happened, you know, and uh, my mom was really happy about that. So parents appreciate gratitude, affection, obedience, respect, and honor. Yes, there are painful moments, but uh, they're interspersed with moments of sheer delight. I watch it in you guys' eyes, you guys that are parents. And some parents have had that happen to them. Even grandparents, you know. I know a couple, I know a couple of grand, few grandparents around here. And I watched them travel a thousand miles just to see their grandchild smile. <laughs> Overjoyed with it. They'd go to any length for that. I remember my sister moving from New Jersey to California because her grandchildren was there. Her children moved there. And she didn't have no life without them. She wanted to be with her children. How about the Heavenly Father? Doesn't he want to be with us? Wherever we are, wherever we do, and wherever we say, and wherever, wherever, I didn't get, I'm jumping ahead, okay. But our Heavenly Father finds pleasure in the many same things as he interacts with his beloved children. Praise God. Because without that, I'd be gone, you know. <laughs> he holds pleasure in his right hand. Did you know that God holds pleasure in his right hand? That was news to me, but I read it in Psalm 1611. It says, you will make known to me the path of life. In your presence is the fullness of joy. In your right hand, there are pleasures forever. Who's sitting at the right hand of God? Jesus. That's the way I seen it when I read that, that Psalm. And we are his pleasure. We are his delight. He takes joy Hallelujah. in our life before we even done anything. It ain't like we earned it. It ain't like we deserve it. It ain't like uh, we graduated to a certain position to where, okay, now you, I like you. While we were yet still sinners, Jesus died for us. Hallelujah. That's the love of God right there. Amen. It can't get any loving than to love a dirty, ragged sinner like me. <laughs> you know, even Paul the Apostle said, Oh, wretched man am I. Who shall relieve me of this? He said, Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. Praise God. Oh, my phone's asking me if I fell. No, I did not fall. Okay. <laughs> my watch. My phone. It's like my phone. It's like attached. One of my bionics. Okay. So, God is the source of true life and pleasure. It's natural to conclude that he himself feels pleasure. Of course. I believe it's even he says that. What puts a smile on his face? What warms his heart? What brings him pleasure? 
some important things to ponder concerning pleasing God. Can you guys hear me out there? Okay, Tom? Okay, thank you. Just checking. Okay. I know God hears me. Tom has a little trouble sometimes. (laughs) Only those who are born again have the capacity to please God. Hello. Jesus said we're born of the water and the flesh. He said, I tell you the truth, you have to be born again of the Spirit and to enter the kingdom of heaven. <clears throat> so it's, uh, uh, okay. Some important things to ponder concerning pleasing God. You have to be born again and have the capacity to have the capacity to please God. So let me just say that, to have the capacity to please. In other words, we can be born again and still have the capacity to please God, but maybe we don't, you know, with some of the things we do. But we have the capacity to please God because the Holy Spirit is in us now. Now we have the strength to do it through the Spirit of God. It looks like our strength, but it's his strength. My arm will fail me. His, he's a mighty God. His arm never fails. Okay, never fails. Don't ever doubt that, please. Oh, God wasn't strong enough. Don't, don't ever even say that. God is a mighty God all the time, every day, all day, for eternity, eternity. And so, he's with you from beginning to the end. He's the Alpha Omega, okay? All right, we sing about that, okay? (sighs) I get excited, okay? That he himself feels, (laughs) that's an important thing. So, um, those who live according to the flesh cannot please God. Romans 8.8. 8. Those who live according to the flesh cannot please God. That's why I struggle. That's why I struggle out there. Because I'm living by the flesh sometimes. Don't even know it. Flesh just snaps right in there like that. It's like, in. And you're like, hey, get out. If you're aware, if you're alert enough. <laughs> the goal of God is to continue to work in life is to please him. Did you know the goal of God is... His continuous work in our life is to please him. It's the most amazing thing there is in the universe. I was going to say the world. It's the most amazing thing that he starts this whole thing. He develops us in a way to please him. And the whole plan was for us to please him to begin with. And we never could do that without him and being born again. When he sends his son so we can please him. And, and with our lives. It's, it's, it's like he does all the works. He starts it and he ends it. <clears throat> Now, the God of peace who brought us up from the dead, brought up from the dead the great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the eternal covenant, even Jesus, our Lord, equip you in every good thing to do his will, working in us that which is pleasing in his sight, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. That's Hebrews 13. 20 and 21. Actually, when I was preparing this, Tom's sermon last week was echoing my head a little bit because it was in a similar way. He was talking about Saul and King David, King Saul and King David, and um, God, Saul was not pleasing to God, <laughs> you know? And so some of those, uh, the, your sermon was echoing through my preparations, Tom, for a couple of days. Second Corinthians 5, 9 says, therefore, We also have as an ambition, whether at home or absent, to be pleasing him. Faith. I'm going to talk a little bit about faith. Most would agree that when we meet God, we want to hear him say, oh, here you go. When you leave this plane of existence, what would be the first words you would want? You want to be the first words you hear God say, Steve. You look like you knew the answer, so I figured that out. <laughs> we all want to hear him say, thank you. That's Matthew 5, 25, 23. Uh, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your master. He knew it. He just wanted to hear me say it. <laughs> So we live by faith, not by sight, right? We should be doing that uh, because I got to tell you, sight is terrible today. <laughs> it looks worse and worse, right? Uh, to me, it does. Maybe 
it's always looked like that. Maybe I didn't see it, but it seems that way. God is pleased when we trust him, and without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is the rewarder of those who seek him. Hebrews 11.6. Are you rewarded when you seek God? Are you guys rewarded when you seek God? I have some people saying yes. Of course you're rewarded. God, number one, he hears you. And maybe something doesn't happen right then. But God has a way in his timing and, 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 uh, to get the job done. You know, I mean, he's answering prayers that I prayed 10 years ago. You know, like last week <laughs> or the last month. And uh, I'm like, Phew. not only does he answer it, he gives you more than you asked for. <laughs> and he's an abundant, loving God. He even says in the scripture, he says, I will pour out a blessing from heaven that you will not be able to contain. I love that scripture because that is exactly what happened to me and continues. All right, I couldn't contain that, but you got another one coming. It's amazing. Excuse me. God even derives pleasure from our meditation. You're thinking. What you're doing when you're not talking. Maybe you can talk and think at the same time. But meditation is basically like what's going on here. Now, meditation on God's word is a good thing because what's going on here is not a good thing a lot. This thing is dealing with the flesh, the mind, Right? It's an enemy. Well, it can be an enemy. The enemy uses it. Matter of fact, Satan's voice sounds just like mine. To me, it sounds me, me talking. Or it sounds like God. I can't know what the difference is unless I got some, the word of my li- in my life and I identify to the spirit confirms that it is God that's speaking or else I don't believe it. <laughs> well, I try not to. I can be misled pretty easily. If I listen to myself. I think that's why isolation caused a lot of problems for people during the pandemic. Because the only people they had with them was them. Okay. So, in Psalm 19, 12 to 14, it says, Who can can discern his errors? Acquit, Acquit me from hidden faults. Also, keep back your servant from presumptuous sins. Let, let them not rule over me. Then I will be blameless and I shall be acquitted of the great transgression. God knows the thoughts and intents of our hearts. He can read our minds. I don't like to look at it that way because that sounds like a fortune teller or something, you know, but he is right in us, so he knows what we're thinking even, you know? Let the, what the, um, maybe I got it here. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing in your sight. He sees it. O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Psalm 19, 12 and 14. Okay, did I read that already? No, no. God can derive pleasure from our meditation the things we think about. Ooh. What are the things you think about? Oh, no. He heard that? (laughs) And he's seen that? Your vain imagination? Or that desire for that? Whatever that is? (laughs) Take your own inventory. Or take your own... Look at examine ourselves we must examine ourselves continuously right i mean if we don't we fall further into fleshly designs desires satan's voice speaking trying to derail us you know he wants to destroy kill destroy he wants to kill us destroy us kill steal and destroy yeah and maybe not in that order maybe just maybe destroy steal and kill you that's god's word 
God can derive pleasure from our meditation, things we think about. Now, lately, I've been driving around town, and my biggest problem, you might have, I might have told you before, my biggest problem is driving around town and trying to live a godly life, okay? When I drive around town, it seems like Satan is in front of me. <laughs> like, I'm like, what's the matter with that? It doesn't need no help. Can't he just, you know? I am taking the inventory of, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at people, I am judging them, I'm slandering them, I am crucifying them, I'm just, I mean, almost, you know, and you know what, it's bad, because my wife's with me, she's sometimes going, yeah, <laughs> and I'm like, I'm misleading my wife, you know, and uh, I decided I have enough of that, I've had enough of that, in the flesh, I decided that, in the spirit, God confirmed it, he goes, I got a way for you, you know, so now, and my wife would confirm, and she said she's proud of me, and I said, well, Jesus is doing it. Every time somebody does that in front of me now, I go, but that guy, I'm like, oh, forgive me, Lord. That's right. Bless that guy up front. Me, yeah, just help him in his ways. He probably has a tight schedule, and he's looking at his phone trying to figure out where to go because he's supposed to be there 10 minutes ago. And now he's waiting at a green light in front of me. Help him and forgive me. And then as soon as that's over with, another guy comes. And it's one after another, it's another. I'm driving down the road saying, forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. Bless them, Lord. Bless them, Lord. <laughs> and uh, for days, you know, for days, I stuck with it, Collins. Good. I stuck with it. And then God was stuck with me, too. And he helped me get past that to some degree, you know. He opened up another lane. No, I'm like it. <laughs> Not on I-95, that's for sure. And, uh, but he, he made a way that's helped me overcome it to some degree. I would say about 60%. All of a sudden, I wasn't doing it anymore. Right, Inge? I was kind of accepting. <sighs> that's just our society that we live in. And it's crazy, especially South Florida. It's so tight. And so many people. And it's they can't make any more roads, it seems like. And plus, you know, we ought to pray for people. Amen. We ought to pray for people, you know. So that was a big deal for me. You might not seem like it to you because you aren't me, but you may be experiencing similar things. You know? So, praise and thanksgiving. Do you know that God finds pleasure in that? I think you probably know that. Praise and thanksgiving. Hebrews 13, 15, and 16 says, Through him let us continuously offer up a sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips. And give thanks to his name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. For with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. God is well pleased. Okay. God is pleased with our godly character. You, 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 boy, we heard people say, what kind of character is that? Well, he's a character. I've heard people say that in my past. and no, that, that, mean, that didn't mean a good thing. Didn't necessarily mean a bad thing. But it was just a, that person was a strange person or something. But I know when I grew, as I grew in Jesus, um, that I had character flaws. Who would have thought, Right? I had defects or sinful nature that was in ground. It was ground in to the fabric of my being, you know? It was like, it had my soul kind of captured. And I just, I was, uh, didn't have the power to change at all, at all. Didn't have the power to change. I tried to change. I even faked it, you know? And... It, it bore no fruit. In other words, nothing got better. I was just, my knuckles got whiter, you know. I was like, I'm okay. And, uh, you know, I was a recovered alcoholic, so my escape used to be alcohol and drugs. And, but when I, when I gave that up, I didn't have no more escape. 
I didn't have no way out no longer until Jesus came to me. He said, I am the way, <laughs> the truth, and the, and the life, and the light. So, and, the, and it's shown in the darkness of my heart that Jesus was real and that he wanted to lead me out of my old character into his character <laughs> and teach me his ways. Show me your ways. That's another thing about grace of God. He actually lets me sing, you know, which can be disturbing at times, especially to somebody that's trying to lead. And, uh, <laughs> and it, it ain't getting better, I got to tell you. See, that ain't still in there from New Jersey, right? Okay. He's pleased with godly character and obedience, and obedience. Oh, here we go, obedience. I think that's why people turn away from us when we try. They think right away, they jump right to obedience, you know, rather than accepting Jesus and seeing the light shining in the darkness and the things that need to be overcome by the power of the Lord and the Holy Spirit in our lives that we can't do it ourselves. It has to be a godly, mighty power, supernatural, loving and kind, gracious, full mercy power because we need all that to change us because we are, I mean, I mean me, I am like, I, I'm a sinful, wretched person without Jesus Christ. The only good thing in me, I think Paul said, was Jesus Christ. You know, there's nothing good in me except for save Jesus Christ. In this flesh, it's, it's just a, you know, I want to be a, a, a holy and, and what's it, holy is, a, um, I want to live holy, right? So I want to be um, a holy and acceptable, but really, in my body, and I said this at the recovery Bible study, Jessica was there. That I said, actually, I'm wrinkled and detestable, you know, right? A holy and acceptable. In my flesh, that's all it is. It's still holding together, though, you know, and I'm happy for that. How about this? Praying for others pleases God. Psalm 12, 1 and 2. Therefore, I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living sacrifice and pleasing to God, which is a spiritual act of service, of worship. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may prove what is the will of God, what the will of God is, that which is good and pleasing, and we sung it, perfect. In the perfect will of God, there's no unperfectness about the will of God. Our will has a lot of unperfectness about it, but God's will has no unperfectness about it. And as we adopt God's teaching into our life, the Father Almighty, Jesus Christ, and, and the Holy Spirit work in our lives in a ways that he reproves us and he changes us into ways that resemble him. Hallelujah. And that's his whole purpose. Because you know why? Because it pleases him. It pleases him to see us growing like him, like the father he is. What does a father or a mother teach their children? Their ways. Teaches them their ways. And when God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit work together and teaches us their ways, we are changed, man. All we have to do is humbly submit ourselves to him. We have to come in humility because God's power is great in weakness and in weakness, we come, we find that out. And, but if we come in strength, we don't get it, you know? We have to be broken. But we don't have to want to change that. I don't want to cuss anybody in front of me no more in traffic, you know? Curse them, you know? I don't cuss. Well, sometimes I actually do. Forgive me, Lord, for that too. Have them forgive me too, Lord, I pray. How about this? God takes pleasure in prayer. Yeah, praying. Proverbs 15, 8. The sacrifice of the wicked is, is an abomination to the Lord, but the prayer of an upright person is his delight, okay? Which is the same word as pleasure, pretty much. It's his pleasure. He takes delight. He takes delight. And there are many more. God is pleased with justice. 
I never used to like justice. <laughs> and I never received the justice I probably should have. Of course, I should have paid the price for all my sins. But Jesus did in my place. My place. God was satisfied with that. Thank God. He designed it and he delivered us. God takes pleasure in delivering his people. How about that? He is pleased. In Psalm 40, 13, it says, Be pleased, Lord. Deliver me. Make haste, O Lord. Help me. That was my prayer. But it was real cut short. It was just, help me. You know? And that's the greatest, shortest prayer there is. Help, God. Help me, God. God takes pleasure in a gentle and quiet spirit. It pleases the Lord God. Now, I've got to tell you, when I read that, all of my mind just went to Angela, you know, because she's a gentle and quiet spirit. She might not say that she might, she'll probably contest that, but that's my witness. My wife is a gentle and quiet spirit. And if you've ever been around her, you'd know that's true. Yeah. Yeah. There's really a lot more that pleases God. I mean, there's tons. But those are, obedience is probably the biggest one of all. He doesn't require sacrifice. He requires obedience. He got so angry at uh, different, um, Tom read a little bit, you don't want to sacrifice the rams and bulls and the blood of these animals, no burnt offerings, they don't please me at all. He says, but to obey is the best thing. That pleases him more than anything. That's why he had such trouble with the Israelites in the desert. Jesus was very concerned about pleasing the Father. He says, I do what the Father tells me to do. And he knows the Father's voice. Do we do that? I mean, I'm not trying to, can, you know, I know I have trouble sometimes. Maybe we all do. If you're anything like me, I don't always listen to the Lord. I jump out of my flesh like I talked about. But Jesus, who lived a perfect life, said he, he basically took pleasure in following God's directions. You know, we have God's directions, right? Where is it? <laughs> yeah, it's in his word, right? What did somebody say once? Uh, basic instructions before leaving earth, the Bible. <laughs> Which kind of wraps it up a little bit. But here we are, we got this book of instructions. Come on, we got it. You know, just start reading. You know what? It'll get you so excited, you want to go tell everybody. We got some people here that do that. I got uh, Corey. He's so excited right now, he's busting at the seams. Because he's, in, you know what? Because he's entrenched in Bible studies all week long. And he's on fire for the Lord. That brings you on fire for the Lord. And he wants to, he's so excited, he wants to tell everybody. So he's out there evangelizing on the streets. You all know it. A lot of you know what that's like. You know, I pray that we revive that spirit of God in our lives and ways to where we get like that again, you know. And uh, this world certainly needs it. We need it. Our families need it. The people we love need it. And um, I pray that we can uh, get to that spot again. Return to your first love. Okay, I don't even know how much time I took, but it looks like it's probably about time. And there's so much more there. Pleasing God is his main purpose for us to please him. And he, he supplies the power to do it. And uh, we just have to submit and rely upon him. But God had me preach that word today because of what was, I wasn't pleasing him on the road. And I sought to do a better job. And he was faithful to supply the power. And uh, that's going to continue. It's, not a, it's, not, it's just the beginning. 
And um, I was looking for other scriptures and stuff to preach today. And uh, I said, well, you know, I, I just want to please the congregation. And God chastised me on that one. <laughs> he goes, he goes, you ought to please me, not, them, not man, please God. And that's where I got the scripture. <laughs> that's where I got the word. That's where I got the word, Tom. You know, and it, it comes like that. If you ask God to show you, he will show you. He will show you. Because he's a faithful father. He doesn't ignore his children. Come on. He's not an absentee dad. He didn't leave the house. He's right here. You know, this is the temple of God. You know, this is just a building. You are the church. Right. We all know these things. You know, God's in our house. (laughs) We're in his house. You know, don't grieve the Holy Spirit. That's what I've been doing, especially on the road. Anyway, that's my deal with the Lord right now. And he's uh, working in that area of my life. Maybe there's areas in your life that need some work. And uh, just remember this. The flesh can't heal the flesh. The Spirit of God can change everything. And the flesh has to follow. (laughs) You can drag it with us, you know. So if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, then this is an opportunity. Because you cannot please God unless you are born again. And you can't get the Holy Spirit in your life unless you're born again. That's when the Spirit enlightens the person. God said this when Jesus got baptized in the river. It was like a dove alighting upon his head. And he said, this is my son who I am well pleased with. Before Jesus did any miracles, he didn't feed the multitudes. You know, he didn't raise the dead. He didn't heal anybody. His ministry didn't even start yet. The Holy Spirit just came upon him, and he went into the desert for 40 days and 40 nights and, and uh, fasted, and Satan hampered him, and he used the power of the Spirit of God's Word to overcome Satan's temptations. Same temptations are happening today in all of our lives, and um, we had the same weapon, God's Word, God's Word. So if you haven't come to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you can have all the power in the, in the universe if you accept him. You can use it every day according to God's will, and he will supply you. He loves you as children. Who doesn't love his children? Who doesn't love his children? Right? You, if you're not a child of God today, you have an opportunity to become one. Because he who believes, confesses with his mouth, and believes in his heart, is saved. We just read that in, read that in Scripture today. And in Romans 10. And um, it says a little bit more. But by faith we receive. With our mouth we confess, and with our heart we believe. So if you don't know Jesus, come forward and we'll pray for you. And we're going to do a song. And, and um, praise God. Amen.
So we're just going to invite you to pray at this time and take some quiet time and to submit your request to God. He's got his ears are open. So we're going to do that before we go to communion. Okay. You might want to examine our hearts and minds. Is there anything objectionable we can offer it up to the Lord now? Ask for his love in our lives to forgive us if we have to confess. Also, if we have anything, if we have requests or petitions, we can do it now. We're going to take a few minutes, okay?
I don't know about you, but this prayer time could go on for another hour because there's so many things to pray about. There's so many needs in my life and my heart and the burdens I have for other people and stuff. But here we are. And again, I mentioned, as I did last week, that in our bulletin, there's a list of prayer requests. And I would like to ask if you would join me right now, and let's lift up these prayer requests to the Father. Lord, we just ask you to bless Mitch Cruson. He's lost his wife, and he needs your comfort every day to fill the gap that she has left. I pray, Father, that you would bless his finances and that you would help him with all the worldly issues that can go with the loss of a spouse. And I pray, Lord, that you would continue to bless him on the job, the new job that he just recently got. Pray for Maurice McLean, Father, that you would touch his heart and that you would return him to his first love, that he, Lord, would be restored in fellowship to you. Yes, Father, we just rebuke spirits of rebellion, of frustration, of hurt and anger and even enmity towards you, bitterness and unforgiveness. We rebuke these spirits. We bind them away from our brother Maurice in Jesus' name. And we loose your Holy Spirit to bring conviction, repentance, restoration, and reconciliation, Father, in Jesus' name. Lord, we lift up Steve Carter to you, and again, we curse this brain tumor. We command it to wither and die. And we pray, Father, that you would res restore communication with, between him and his family, that you would bring reconciliation and love there in Jesus' name. Lord, whatever the hurts, whatever has kept them apart, I pray, Lord, you bring healing to all those hurts, even now. Lord, we lift up Alice Calvert to you, our dear sister. We just ask that you would bless her, bring healing to bear upon her, her life. I'm reminded your word says that by Jesus' stripes we are healed. And we claim that healing for Alice right now. Raise her up, Lord. When we speak to the body of Alice Calvert across time and space, and we say, be whole, line up with the word of God, and be whole in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Lord, we lift up Jay Robert to you, and we pray that you would continue to work in his life, and that you would restore his eyesight. His desire has been to have his eyesight restored. We pray, Father, that you would open these eyes, and that you would cause him to have a miracle of of healing, a miracle, uh, if as it were, uh, of eyesight in Jesus' name. Finally, Lord, we lift up Astrid McCrell to you and we pray that you would bring healing to her body. She's gone through some terrible operations and we pray, Lord, that the the fruit of those operations would be health and well-being and not struggle and sorrow and pain. So we ask you, Father, to bring healing to her body now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Amen. We're going to have a time of communion, and so uh, as the band plays, we welcome you to come forward. The deacons will be here, and take the elements, and come down the center aisle, depart to one of the side aisles, and, uh, and hold them, and we'll take them, the communion together.
Love those little R&B flourishes on the song. Wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> hey, here we are. We have the opportunity, the honor, as it were, to share together, to share together in something that Jesus said, this do in remembrance of me. He didn't really say a lot of things for us to do. He said a few. But one of the things he explicitly stated was, do this in remembrance of me. It was a Thursday night. He was gathered with disciples, and he took some bread, and he broke it, and he blessed it. And he said, this is my body given for you. Let us receive the body of Christ right now. Then he took the cup, prayed over it, and he said, this is the blood of the new covenant. He poured his blood out for us on the cross. And by doing so, that innocent blood paid for you and me. We don't have to be beaten down. We don't have to struggle. We don't have to be condemned, looking forward to an eternity of sorrows. Instead, because of what he did for us through this new covenant, in his blood, we are free. We are loved of the Father. And we have an eternity of blessings to look forward to. Let's take this right now. Praise you. Heavenly Father, I ask your blessings upon this congregation. I thank you for each precious soul that has joined us today, whether online or here in the sanctuary. I pray, Father, that you would minister to each one. And as we've received these elements, I pray, Lord, that the promises that Jesus gave would be manifested in our lives. Lord God, people have given offerings and tithes here, and we pray that you would use those to the glory of your kingdom. May they reap a mighty harvest from that which they have given in money, in time, in prayer, in Bible study, in witnessing to others. Lord God, may your people see a mighty return on every investment into your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So a few announcements this morning. Um, well, that was really loud. Um, if you look in the back of your bulletin on the inside, there are two things that have a lot of information. Um, so first is Operation Christmas Child. If you're new, every year we pack Christmas shoe boxes to send to kids all over the world, and um, we have the opportunity to just pray and um, just know that the Lord will use these boxes to somehow bring these children close to himself. Um, so there's, you can either get a shoe box and pack it yourself at your home and then bring it on November 14th when we have our shoe box packing day, or you can get items and bring them to the church as well, and then we can all pack them together. Um, so there are a few different options, whatever you feel comfortable with, but November 14th will be the day that we kind of come together and pray over them and um, just really ask the Lord to use those in a mighty way. And then also, um, we did Alpha a few months ago, and we're going to do another one. Um, so it's going to be on Tuesdays in the evening. So it'll be a little bit of a commitment, but this is going to be a time for you to come and just... Bring friends. Yes, yeah, so you can bring friends, you can invite people who may not come to this church. Alpha is, it, it's a 13-week it's a yes, course on exploring the foundation and all the truth about who God is and who Jesus is. And it's specifically designed for people who do not know anything about Christianity, do not know anything about God. It's specifically designed for atheists, people who genuinely don't believe in God. Um, but it's an open forum type of an idea where anybody who has any questions, Christian, atheist, believes a different religion or not, can come and ask their questions. And it's a safe place. But they also, we have videos that we watch and we have discussions that we'll have. And 
Um, it's, it's just a place for people to ask their questions and to explore and to um, let the Holy Spirit kind of move and reveal who God is to people who may not necessarily come to church or may not necessarily go to a Bible study. Um, so I've been through it a few times, and it's really amazing. And I've seen in my Christian friends and in my non-Christian friends how the Lord moves. And for both, it's amazing. And it's miracles in both of their lives. So I would really encourage you to come. Um, you do have to sign up. So please call my mother um, if you would like to be involved or if you'd like to sign up to join or if you'd like to invite people and bring them. Um, but it's going to be Tuesday evenings. We also have a few different Sunday school oh, classes. Wait, wait, wait. Where's her number? It's on there. It's on here. Okay. It's Tuesday evenings from 7 to 8.30. And I think we're going to have some dessert or food or something. Their name is Jennifer. Her name is Jennifer Foreman. Um, and then we also have a few Sunday school classes before the service. Obviously, the service starts at 1045. But if you want to meet people and um, seek God in a, in a more intimate setting at 930, we have um, a prayer class that Aunt Carrie runs. And it's kind of exploring and letting the Holy Spirit reveal himself to you through the scripture in different ways than normal um, and kind of just praying through different things and she's been through a lot of situations and has had a lot of experience with the Holy Spirit and is kind of like going through certain things and I think it's always good to have a good perspective in that we can't keep the Holy Spirit in a box. Um, so that's one, and then my dad is doing Romans, right? We're doing the real God. Oh, you changed it. Okay. So there's that class, um, which is all about how you view the Lord, and again, good perspective. And then Uncle Jimmy has a class that also meets at 930, and I don't actually know what you're going through. Well, it's just a Holy Spirit-led class. We're in Romans 10 today and 11 next week. It'll be a surprise. So if you'd like to join a Sunday school class, um, you can try all of them if you'd like. Um, but we really encourage you to do that. I think it's a really good way to um, just, like, get to know people more. Because we have this, which is great, and we have downstairs, which is also great. But, you know, it's different. It's different. So and what's downstairs? Downstairs we have fellowship and food, hopefully. Um, so if you're new, we'd love to come meet you. If you're not new, we'd love to talk to you too. <laughs> um, so we have one more song, and then we'll all go downstairs and have a great time. But thank you so much for coming, and we hope you have a really great Sunday. Yes. The parlor. Do we call it the parlor? Yeah. It's the fellowship hall. No, 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 no. We got alphas in the parlor. Oh, the parlor. Oh, you're right. So for Alpha, it's going to be a lot to explain. There's a lot of rooms in this church. Basically, when does this start? <laughs> October 12th? Okay. <laughs> we have time. But if you go downstairs in the fellowship hall, if you've been here before, if you go down these stairs on the right-hand side all the way down, you'll hit the fellowship hall, which will be there after this. There are these little stairs that lead outside. I'm sure all of you have seen the kids running outside. You go through that door, and you'll hit outside. And then if you keep going, there's another staircase, and it's the door at the bottom of the stairs. We'll revisit that. Maybe we'll make a map, and we'll, we'll put it in here at some point. <laughs> you know? big sign, there we go. There we go. If you're lost, just Let's let pray. someone know. Please, please, please. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for the, for the body of Christ that's gathered here and online with us, Lord. Thank you, though, that you make a way for us to please you. 